Welcome to the Scottsdale Vibes Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Haygood. It's another week in Scottsdale and another amazing guest here at the table with me. Each week, we love to feature the people, places, and events happening here in Scottsdale because let's get to know our community and really who lives here and support one another. One of the ways to do that is go ahead and subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast listening app. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and anywhere on the World Wide Web that you want to find us. Don't forget to also subscribe to the Scottsdale City Lifestyle Magazine Magazine, where it's just another opportunity for you to get to know Scottsdale and all the amazing people that call this city home. I'm going to take a short break, and when we come back, we are going to have one of Scottsdale's own famous, and I will say, actors and models here in town. Stay tuned. When it comes to protecting you, your family, and all your assets, you need to have someone that you can trust, and that's Jeremy Mueller of State Farm Insurance. Jeremy Mueller has lived in Scottsdale his whole life. How can anyone else know your needs more than someone who's been here and seen it all? Jeremy and his team are always ranked in the top percent at State Farm. He cares, he's knowledgeable, and most importantly, he's always available. Don't believe me? Give him a call at 480-515-5223 or find him at jeremymueller.com. Growing up in Long Island, New York, Adriana Lasitra knew she wanted to be an actress since she was a little girl. She secured some jobs as a child, but as she grew up, her fear and lack of confidence took the best of her. And as a woman as well, I know exactly how she feels. She gave up her childhood dreams and went on to journalism in school instead. Another girl after my heart. But it was that nagging desire of her childhood dream to be the actress and model that never went away. She currently has a role in the series Scottsdale that just came out and already started to film season two next year. And the feature film 12 Steps to Recovery she also stars in currently making the feature film festivals. And she is currently also writing her own sketch comedy show for women. So here to tell us how Scottsdale can make your dreams come true is Adriana Lasitra. Uh, I almost mispronounced it, Adriana. I'm trying. (laughs) Um, So many people want to grow up and be that famous actress or actor. Tell me about what it was that you were a little girl that put that bug in you. And I know growing up in New York City and Broadway, I mean, that is the heart besides the West Coast and L.A. of it. So tell me about that little girl, Adriana, who wanted to be that. Yeah, I come from a big family. I have four sisters and a brother. Oh, my gosh. What number are you? Uh, The third. Okay, you were right in the middle then. uh, (laughs) Totally middle child. Um, But I was always the performer of the family. I had so much fun making everybody laugh with my, like, weird mannerisms that I would do and the silly jokes that I would come up with and skits that I would have around the house. And, I mean, I was just— the sister who had inside jokes with everybody. And I loved watching um, Disney Channel when I was growing up and those people being stars on TV. And it just, I caught the bug really early and started taking classes when I was around eight years old. Oh, wow. And, okay. Mm-hmm, so I got into acting classes really early and I always just knew that that was what I wanted to do. So or I remember like this is when Disney like wasn't on cable. So we had to like pay for it. And so we like had to go to neighbors houses that had the Disney channel. <laughs> so I remember them like putting on, you know, the musicals. I mean, every that was what was fun was the sing and dance and the storyline and stuff like that. Talk about starting off at a young age and what is acting as a child like? So from starting at a young age, I think that acting gave me a lot of confidence Um, to be in front of people, to be myself, to be creative. It helped me with public speaking. I was never really afraid of getting up in front of big crowds and speaking. And it was really mostly about um, embracing who you are. That's what acting classes as a kid are like. And then it sort of changes as you get older. uh, And these doubts kind of creep in and you have to audition to be in school plays and, you know, fear starts to creep in. But when you're a kid, acting classes and acting is really just about embracing who you are and having fun. And I loved that from a very early age. So let's talk about that because you had this confidence, you had this go get them mentality and, and no fear. Talk about the transition of like losing that confidence. I feel like every child goes through it, you know, that middle school, you know, maturity age, lack thereof, I should say. Um, (laughs) 
talk about how that kind of changed you because that puts your dreams on hold for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. So when I was young, there was no fear and no doubt in my mind. Mm-hmm. I was going to be on an actress on the big screen. I was going to win an Oscar. There was, I mean, there was no doubt in my mind that was what was meant for me and that was what was coming. And as I got a little older, I just remember people starting to say, that's not realistic. That's one in a million. Or people my age laughing, oh, you really think you're going to be a famous actress or you really think you can Mm. do that? And those those things, they don't just bounce off you when you're that age. They hit you and they really sink in and you start to let that become the voice in the back of your head. Instead of the voice that tells you you can do it, you can do it, you have this voice saying it's not realistic. I should get a backup career. I remember one of my guidance counselors saying at least go to college and get a backup. Something is a backup. Something is a backup. But with acting, if you really want to go for it, it's kind of the career where you have to burn the lifeboats and just go all in. But I let that fear kind of creep in, and I did. I went for a backup career. (laughs) Uh, Do you still have that Oscar speech? I'm sure you have, you know, in the back (laughs) of your pocket. It's written somewhere (laughs) in some little diary of mine in my chicken scratch 10-year-old handwriting. (laughs) I love it. It is something, I think it doesn't matter what you go to, parents just, and guidance counselors too, they just want you to always be successful, right? And that is their job, you get it. But it's like, have a backup career in the sense of like, fine, go minor in English or writing or something Mm -hmm. for you to do that. You did choose one that kind of helped you though in journalism. So talk about that transition of falling into your backup plan and how that became your career for a while. Yeah, I think everyone meant really well. They just wanted me to, to be safe and have that kind of backup. So I ended up going and majoring in journalism and creative writing, which was something that was always also on my mind um, when I was younger, acting and screenwriting. I was like, oh, I want to write sitcoms. I want to be in them, but I also want to write them. So the idea of going to school for journalism, that was sort of the safe, the safe option. And then creative writing sort of fulfilled that creativity that I need to have as a creative person. Um, But when I went to school initially, I was undecided. I didn't know what I was going to do. because Like 90% of mm -hmm. people that go off to college. (laughs) Exactly. I I mean, once I took acting off the table and I was like, I need to have a real job, the idea of a real job had never occurred to me, so I didn't know what to do. So I went undecided, and um, I was taking just the regular intro classes and I remember getting an A plus on a paper and being like, wow, this feels good. I got an A plus. I got a recognition for being a good writer. And some, one teacher just saying, oh, you're a great writer. You should really do this. And just that little bit of validation and, yeah. and praise, I just ran with it. I love it. And I loved magazines. I, I remember so many of my favorite TV characters and movie characters being magazine editors. Mm-hmm. So I was like well, okay, I guess I'll just go do that. (laughs) Who were some of your idols growing up that you watched? Um, Well, Meryl Streep. Of course. And Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. So that right there. But I also really loved Kate Hudson. She's one of my favorite actresses. I just love how free she is. She has very free spirit, adventurous personality. And she was a magazine editor in How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, which was one of my favorite movies growing up. (laughs) So um, those two definitely influenced my my idea to become a magazine editor. I love that. So you're still in New York at this time Mm -hmm. doing all of that, So, which is still a huge place to be successful in the media industry and magazines in general. How long did you do that? And when did you finally go back to, I still am not living my dream that you have not given up on since a little girl? Yeah. So I ended up doing some internships while I was in college. I interned at 17 Magazine, which led to an internship at HGTV Magazine. And then I ended up graduating or leaving college a semester early so I could do a full semester internship at HGTV Magazine. And after that semester, they asked to hire me full time. And I was like, awesome. This is really cool. I loved interior design. I I still got to be creative. Yeah. So I, I wasn't writing so much there. I was doing styling and that was fun. So for a while, I, I was excited about it. I, and the idea of acting kind of just fell by the wayside. But putting in all those hours, and it's a lot of hours yes, when it you is. work in a magazine, <laughs> to produce a magazine takes a lot of work. I just always had this little piece in the back of my mind where 
something didn't feel right, and it, I just felt unfulfilled. Yeah. Even though it was fun, and I liked the people that I worked with, and it was a creative career, there was just something saying, "But you could be. But you could do this. What about that dream? What about, what about that little girl? Like it was always in the back of my head that I wanted to be, on camera. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about how she finally listened to that little girl in her head. Her dreams are coming true. And Scottsdale really is the place where she's getting all her work. So we'll be right back to hear about that. Buying a home can be scary and sometimes frustrating. But all of that can go away with the right realtor. And that's where Sean Shackleton with the Shackleton Group is here for you. Sean has over 25 years experience in real estate. She's here to get you what you want and won't settle for less. She's experienced, knowledgeable, and understands this market, which these days is always changing. Take the stress out of your next home purchase by calling Sean at 480-734-7277. You can also find her at theshackletongroup.com. We're sitting here with Adriana. She is talking to us about being an actress here in Scottsdale and a model. So, Adriana, tell me, you don't really think of Scottsdale as being like the happening place for movie stars. And I mean, where where they come when it's cold, where they live, right? Like where their <laughs> snow destination and their resort town. But you are be finding your career here in town. So talk about the transition of coming from New York to Scottsdale, first of all, and then how that has just changed your path and career to find pure happiness. Yeah. So initially when I moved here, I moved here because my husband has three kids who were living here and we wanted to move to be close to them. But in the back of my head was, oh my God, I'm leaving New York, the (laughs) best place for acting. And I'm coming to where? Yeah. Arizona, Scottsdale. I didn't know much about it. I didn't think it was going to be possible to pursue that career here anymore. But once I got here, I signed up for an acting class, and I realized that there is a really bustling community of creative actors and directors and filmmakers here in Arizona who are constantly working and putting things together. I love that. Creatives will always find an outlet. Yes. And if they can't find it, they'll make it. That's that's, so true. Yeah, and that's what's happening here in Arizona. So um, when I first landed here... I started taking classes. My acting teacher, Amanda Melby at Verve Studios, was had her, a lot of her career here in Arizona, and she um, helped me find an agent. So I'm represented by Ruth Layton at Layton Agency, and she has been helping me get a lot of the jobs here that I get in Arizona. So there's a lot of commercial work, but then there's also a lot of um, independent TV and film opportunities here. So you came to Scottsdale, you're doing these auditions. There's not, I did not realize that there was a big town here for all of this. So that's remarkable to me. I totally agree that when you are that creative, artistic person, you gravitate towards the community that you have an interest in. And I tell my, I I tell people this, you'll find your people. Mm -hmm. They're where you are at. You automatically will be connected to them somehow. It's weird how that happens. So talk about when you're getting here, you're getting more roles here in Scottsdale than you did in New York. So I have two questions that, do you think some of it is like, People don't realize what's going on here in Arizona. So the competition like isn't you don't have as much feeding in. So you have a better chance of being seen. And then talk about how those auditions work here out of Scottsdale to get these national shows and movies and everything that you've started. And we'll talk about as well. Yeah. So what's going on here in Arizona, it's mostly commercial work or regional commercial work and then also independent films and TV shows. So there is a lot less competition than you would have in LA or New York. So it's actually a great place to get your foot in the door and to start getting experience because you're not up against these people in New York who have been acting since they were I right. mean, in movies since they were children or or have just the best acting teachers and everything that they could have. So there is a lot less competition here, but we're also not too far from LA no. or New Mexico just a short ride away, and those have obviously really bustling communities. So we do have the opportunity, a unique opportunity here to live here and still work in both of those places. And with how everything has gone digital now, especially after COVID, most of our auditions are self-tapes, which is basically we get the script, we tape it ourselves, and we send it into a casting director who casts us or not. And then we can travel just for either a callback audition or for the actual sh- filming. Yeah. So we 
really have the opportunity to live wherever we want now and work wherever we want as well. See, okay. First of all, I, that's my favorite thing about COVID is the remoteness. <laughs> like we can go anywhere and everywhere, which I personally like. I try to find a positive in everything. Mm -hmm. To me, though, that seems like a heck of a deal because you can do as many takes and you're not worried about like, oh, my gosh, I messed up. Can I do it again? And then five takes later, they're like, all right, the next person. You get to do your best and send it in. Mm -hmm. And then they go from there and call you back in for that second round. Yeah. So that seems like an ideal situation for it's, someone. It's good. But on the other hand, since it's remote, more people from ah, all around the country see? are – yeah are submitting so the competition is a little <laughs> steeper as well so <laughs> there are pros and cons <laughs> let's talk about you adriana right now there's a new show out we just talked about it in the scottsdale city lifestyle magazine in mm -hmm. september scottsdale i want to hear all about it i have to admit i haven't seen it yet because i like to talk to you before i just come in with like well i saw this and i saw this right Tell me about it. How would you get it? And what can we expect when we all go check it out? Yeah. So that is a, t a TV show that was written and directed by Anthony Bond. He's a director out of L.A., but he recently moved to Arizona. And the story is really about a wealthy family who lives in Scottsdale. They have this insurance company, and they find themselves in the middle of this drug scandal. <laughs> and also um, one of the members of the family uh, something happens to him and the family is really scrambling to figure out who's going to lead the company now that he's not around. The insurance company, not the drug company. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sort of how this family is going to find their way out of this scandal and how they're going to maintain the power in of their company when there are threats coming in yeah. from the outside. It's a little bit like succession meets Breaking Bad. Yes. There's like that. I love those shows. Mm -hmm. Um, what part do you, what part are you playing in it? So my character is named Courtney and she is the fiance of River Merrick. He okay. is the son in the family. Okay. And Courtney really has her own agenda. <laughs> she wants to take some power for herself. There's so, that succession line. <laughs> uh -huh, so she's really in all the family drama and has her hands in every little pot. <laughs> How amazing does it feel to know that, you know, little four, eight-year-old Adriana, like, is now on a show that's successful about a city that not only that, she lives in, you yeah. know, to see this come full circle and then some, because you're also in a feature film right now that is doing the, you know, festival, uh, the circuit, festival yeah. circuit. That's huge. Talk about that. And I want to hear about the film, you know, 12 Steps as well. For sure. So, I mean, it's a dream come true. Anytime I'm on set, I feel just completely lit up inside yeah. and I it's it's very healing because for so many years I was living completely out of alignment with what I wanted to do mm -hmm. and wanted to be and every day I felt that dream sort of getting farther and farther away so now every time I do it I feel completely elated and lit up inside so when I see um, a TV show that I did actually playing or when I watch myself on a big screen at a festival, it's just, it's a dream come true every time. Your face still says it. Like, you're, I think you still could, like, pinch yourself sometimes yeah. is what you look like it right now. It sometimes doesn't feel real. My yeah. husband reminds me all the time. He's like, are you taking this in the way that you should be? And sometimes I do have to take a moment and be like, wow, yeah. it's happening. Yeah. And I made it happen. And it's it really is a dream come true. Let's talk about your feature film that's out, 12 Steps to Recovery. It's mm -hmm. doing the circuits right now. How is that going and where can we find it? Yeah, so we shot that about a year ago from right now. Um, it's It was written and directed and produced by um, Ryan Watson, who is an amazing filmmaker and had this wonderful idea for uh, 12 Steps to Recovery. It's about a boy who um, is addicted to drugs and finds himself in jail because of what the drugs led him to do. And mm -hmm. then coming out, he decides he needs to change his life and finds the 12 step program. And it's a faith based movie. So there is this uh, religious aspect to it, but it's also just the idea of digging yourself out of a hole and finding, finding a way toward redemption mm -hmm. because he has a, he went through a lot, but it was really awesome to film. We shot that entire movie in one week. What? <laughs> it was 
so such long hours. Really, I bet it was a lot of work, but it was so much fun. And by the time we were done shooting, we were all so sad to be leaving set. Aww. We were like hugging each other and taking pictures. And every time you're on set, it becomes a family. Absolutely. And so that that film in particular, by the end of filming, felt like a family. And so it was really cool. Recently, we had a. a premiere for it where all the cast and crew came together. It was so nice seeing everyone again. And we just found out that it's going to be in the Los Angeles Real Recovery Film Festival, which is a film festival all about addiction and recovery. How and amazing. That's it, a huge accomplishment. Yes. And it feels really special, too, because it has such a beautiful message yeah. behind it. So it was just an awesome film to be a part of. And my character in particular, she really represents what it means to forgive. Yeah. And so I loved playing that part. How do you bring personal um, life situations, you know, something like that that you were just talking about, forgiveness and stuff like that, how do you bring that into your movies um, in the sense of who you are as a person? So much of acting is using yourself authentically for mm -hmm. the role. And when it comes down to it, you can relate to every human being, yeah. no matter what the circumstances, even if it is a situation that you have never experienced, you can relate to the feelings of guilt or the feelings of loss or the feelings of resentment or whatever might be in some way or another. It's just the human experience. Yeah. So a huge part of acting is finding where that character lives in yourself and bringing yourself authentically to the role. And that is is so much fun to Use your experiences to help tell the story of someone else's experience. I love that. Well, what's next for you, Adriana? So I have been auditioning like crazy. I'm really working on trying to find representation in L.A. and New Mexico. As much as I love my agent here, she mostly does things in Arizona. But since we're so close to L.A. and New Mexico, I really want to take advantage of those opportunities. So I am working on finding an agent and or manager in both of those places. And I'm writing my own sketch comedy. So I love to do comedy. I love this. I can't, <laughs> it's like so the opposite of what we were just talking yeah. about. So I loved, I love comedy. Like I said, from a young age, I just love making people laugh. I love how lighthearted it can be. And I recently went and wa rewatched, um, Larry David's Curb Your Enthusiasm, oh gosh, which yeah. just Classic. cracks me up so much. And it completely inspired me to just write my own situational comedy, sketch comedy type things. So um, my husband and I are always brainstorming. And whenever we see something happen in real life, we're just jotting it down. So I'm writing a lot of my own sketch comedy, which I want to produce in 2024. And I want to do it with a team of all women filmmakers, sound, camera, everything. I want it to be all female-led. I love it. You'll no doubt succeed at that. Adriana, thank you so much for joining us and teaching us about it and really just showing us don't give up. Like mm -hmm. If you have that dream, make it happen. Absolutely. It's never going to happen without you putting in the hard work to do that. Definitely. I heard this quote that said, the best time to start is 10 years ago. Yeah. And the second best time to start is now. I love so that. I'm going to steal you, that. Yeah. Even if you've let you know, your dream sit on the back burner for a little while. It's never too late. That's so true. Before you leave us today to go back to being an awesome, badass woman, <laughs> showing us all the funny things in life, what is your favorite Scottsdale vibe? My favorite Scottsdale vibe. So immediately when I moved here, one of my favorite things about Scottsdale was the way that everyone seems to be trying to improve themselves. Yeah. Everyone seems to be striving for more, striving for greater striving to help others, just striving to be better. Yeah. And that lifts everybody up. So that was something that inspired me when I moved here and that continues to inspire me every day. I couldn't agree more. That's one of my favorite things about the people here, too. It mm -hmm. just says who we are as a community, right? Yep. I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck. We'll be continuing to see you on the big screen, small screen, and everything in between. Um, in the meantime, you can find out where we can find her and all the information in the description of this episode. Stay tuned. We'll be back with some calendar of events. When it comes to family-friendly dentistry, there's only one place in Scottsdale, and that's Arizona Center for Laser Dentistry teeth cleaning, innovative pain-free laser dentistry, teeth whitening, root canals, and really any dental need you may have, Dr. Rob and his staff at Arizona Center for Laser Dentistry can handle it all. 
They're more than just a dentist. They really are family. We've been going there for over three years, and my family loves them. When your kids get excited to go to the dentist, you know you've got a good one. Dr. Rob DeVito is the only dentist in town that can handle it all. Give him a call at 480-990-1905. You can find him on the web at drdevito.com. And don't forget to tell him you heard him on the podcast. I love that Scottsdale season is about to start. The weather is finally cooling down. I've been having some outside evenings, some uh, beautiful very pleasant morning walk. So I hope everyone's getting out in town and enjoying what Scottsdale is really all about and why we suffer through those horrific four months. So get ready for roars and pours at Phoenix Zoo. It's happening this Thursday, October 5th. It is a 21 and up event, but it's a perfect blend of adventure and indulgence. Wander along select zoo trails while delighting in craft brews, fine wine, and delectable food offerings. As you sip and stroll, get ready for unexpected animal encounters that will bring a touch of magic to your evening. And for those of you who love our four-legged furry friends and helping children with therapy dogs, this is a great charity event happening this weekend that I highly encourage you to go to. It's not a Pausability and Paparazzi charity event. Prepare to be swept away by a star-studded affair dedicated to making a difference in the lives of vulnerable children through the power of pet therapy. It's happening Saturday, October 7th from 6 to 10 at the Arizona Biltmore, and you can still get your tickets to this wonderful event on the description of this episode. And, of course, it's that time of year, the month, I should say, the Arizona State Fair is here. So it's happening all month, and from weird fried food to the custom funnel cake, which is my absolute favorite, there's sure to be something to fit everyone's fun needs. From date night, family night, or just a night out with friends, go and join evening at the State Fair for lots of rides, good food, and just a night full of fun. Don't forget to subscribe to this episode on your favorite podcast listening app. Share it, like it, comment it. Let me know if you want to be on or who I should bring on because this podcast is all about Scottsdale. Don't forget to subscribe also to the Scottsdale City Lifestyle page where you can find out more information about this incredible place we get to call home. Have a wonderful week, Scottsdale. Keep vibing, and I'll see you around town. <laughs>